This is E2902, Spring 2014, Week 4, Lecture 3. Uh, week 4, Lectures 1 and 2 were ready to exam 1. So today we're going to start finite state machines. And the concept can be easily understood via this block diagram, which is going just part of the, which is part of my upcoming book, co-authored with Dr. Banerjee. Now, the idea behind a finite state machine like it's like the term says so a finite state machine is if you will sort of like a definition a finite state machine or fsm abbreviated is a is an abstract representation of sequential logic basically this block diagram summarizes the concept beautifully so what you have is memory that is registered or that is registered of course because it's synchronous and of course we have well-defined reset state all these but the next state is a function of the inputs and the current state. So in other words, this is termed current state. And this is obviously next state. Okay. Next state. But then there are two kinds of finite state machines depending on how the output, depending on the output logic function. So either you have a more machine where the output logic is a function of the current state only, okay? Or you can have a mealy machine that is where the output logic is a function of both the uh, uh, output logic is a function of both the current state and the inputs. That's the mealy machine. But basically, FSMs are used to design clock. sequential logic note that a mealy machine usually has less number of states oops ah i can just reverse my pen the heck states then a more machine okay there are no step by step procedures or algorithms to design an FSM to design an FSM, not an. I don't need to go up there. I can just reverse my pen. Given a problem, we make use of logic that is uh, logic concepts and that is digital logic concepts and experience okay so basically you got to practice a lot uh, although there exists a variety of tools for representing FSMs like state transition tables, okay, state transition tables, finite state or state transition diagrams, um, 
ASMs or algorithmic state machine charts. Algorithmic state machine or ASM, etc. Understand that these are not what you could say silver bullets to quote uh, or to paraphrase actually uh, Fred Brooks from the book The Mythical Man Month. It's a good book if you haven't read it, you should read it. Uh, but anyway, there are no silver bullets, so you just got to think and we'll explicitly, we'll be explicitly or exclusively using state transition diagrams because it's very visual and it's, uh, it's the most useful in my opinion of understanding the underlying functionality of the finite state machine. Okay, So this lecture, we'll do our first example, which is uh, what is called as a single pulse generator okay and all of the reference designs I'm going to cover are on the digital systems website uh, so here it is there is the um, single pulse generator the mod 5 sequence generator and the switch debouncer the mod 5 sequence generator is related to your lab now something very important uh, about finite state machines and sequential logic in particular so I'll write this in red do not attempt to debug the not only this design but any design by what I call staring at it okay you must use functional simulation or for example in system debugging you can use other techniques but this is what I will covered in this course so this is signal tap okay and this is model sim okay of not you can stare at the design for hours and you won't get anywhere okay sorry my mic uh, moved so to repeat you 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 can't stare at the design for hours you won't get anywhere right this is point number one point number two always have a well-defined reset state okay so and I also put the third point which is the conceptual uh, design of sequential logic shortly but now uh, an example is a counter internal register should be properly initialized via reset okay it's an example of a well-defined reset state now the third point which I wanted to make is sequential logic design this is what we'll be aiming for ultimately is basically an FSM finite state machine uh, called control that interacts so double arrow with components called data path okay and data path basically consists of combinational and or sequential logic modules for example um, decoders counters etc right but basically this is the ultimate um, high level abstraction that we'll be aiming for okay and this FSM here is basically what this this is what the picture or the RTL quote-unquote view if you will 
will boil down to. So each of these will be described by their own VHDL uh, statements. And if you do stick to the way I specify the design in VHDL, for example, specifically the state memory, you don't put anything else in the VHDL specification for the state memory. You'll see the VHDL specification for the state memory shortly. In other words, you should always infer a deregister. Then you will most likely not uh, synthesize asynchronous logic. Right? It's not that asynchronous logic is bad. You just got to be very careful when you design asynchronous logic, and that's not that's beyond the scope of this course. Okay, but let's get into the single pulse generator. And basically, the idea of a single pulse generator will be specified. In this case, I mean, we'll specify using timing diagram. And you got to get used to timing diagrams because they are used everywhere. For example, protocol specification, as you'll see in your project involving the I2C bus to interface with the audio codec. Okay. So basically what we have is, of course, a well-defined reset state. Right. So when reset is 0, your pulse out is zero, okay? And then let's make, uh, of course, a clock. Man, wait, I forget the clock. No idea. Try to draw a nice square wave. It's kind of hard on the tablet. I mean, it's kind of hard to, no, it's not hard on the tablet, it's hard to do it using the tablet. Let's say it's asynchronous reset. Okay. A reset. So pulse out is zero, but then let's say input signal. So in other words, single pulse generator is basically your signal is high. Exact. I mean your output is high for exactly one clock cycle. Okay. So let's say we're clicking on the rising edge. And again, I, I apologize for this timing diagram. It's difficult to draw using the tablet. So you go up for exactly one clock cycle. Down, right? So Say your input goes to zero here. Don't care. And the next time the input goes to a one. Okay. Well, let's we'll just leave the input at zero because I'm not gonna draw us again. Right there. Okay. So we have pulse that's high for only one clock cycle. And we'll do a more machine specification of this, okay? Good, so it didn't crash. So here is a more FSM spec. That is a more FSM state transition diagram. So what we have is a well-defined reset state. So here is reset, and in this case, pulse out is Zero. So obviously, the name of my the names of my the name of my state, my states. Oh, sorry, I specified in within circles. Here's the name of my state. Here is the output. This means it's reset. So let me just write a reset over there. Usually, it's not specified. It's like specified as a thick arrow. Okay. And then one of the things to remember is, unlike the late 20th century, that is, uh, ever since the late 1990s, and especially in the early 21st century, we have been using FPGA. Uh, we've been using HDLs to specify logic on FPG to synthesize logic onto FPGAs. So, bottom line is, our FSMs are pretty abstract, right? That is, we don't give every possible input combinations we could, but then let's say you're designing an SD RAM controller, you will end up having more than 60 states, right? But rather, you must understand, for example, that here, pulse out, 
in this case, we can specify every possible input signal because we have only one input signal. And where did it pulse out? I have no idea. So your input signals are basically given on the arcs. Here is input signal complement, right? So as long as input signal is zero, you stay in the state. The moment input signal becomes one, you go to a different state. But the bottom line is not every possible input combination is necessarily specified on the arcs, right? You have to understand and from the context what we're talking about. But anyway, the trick, this is a classic interview question. It's so common, used to be so common, I don't think anybody asks it anymore. But anyway, the idea is you have this output one state where your pulse out is one, okay, Oops. and then You don't care what the input is. Right, and usually this don't care is not specified. Okay. You go to immediately, that is after one clock cycle, you go to output zero state. Here, pulse out is zero. Okay, and as long as input signal is one, you stay in the state, right? So the fact that this state is active only for one clock cycle implies we'll get a one clock cycle wide pulse, right? And then the moment your input signal becomes zero, you go back to, you can go back to your reset state. Okay. Put signal not. Okay. Again, I'm showing you different uh, ways of specifying signal. So the complement can be specified, as you know, from 2900 and our equivalent course with a bar over the signal name, right? But basically, uh, let me delete this page because we don't need it. Okay. So here is the more FSM. Now, an interesting exercise would be to design a mealy FSM. Hint. It will have one less state, okay, but I mean, does it nowadays, uh, the implementing on FPGAs, for example, this one will require us to use two flip-flops because we have three states and the two flip-flops, you can have two bits of memory, so we can have four possible states, but FPGA synthesis tools usually use one-heart encoding so there is one bit is active for each state. So in, in this case, you'll actually have three flip-flops in the FPGA synthesis tools, most likely. When you look at the design on the FPGA. But anyway, you should try the melee FSM, right? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause the lecture. I'm gonna open up. So I've already downloaded from the digital systems website, the single pulse generator reference design, uh, unzipped it. So let me pause the lecture and we will continue shortly. We have only about a minute. So I'll try to finish this within the next minute. Wait, I'll be back. Continuing, I have downloaded and synthesized the design. So a couple of points, three points actually. Point number one, this single pulse generator actually is tested by using a mod three counter that is incremented using a key. However, it's clocked by using the 50 megahertz clock. That means every time we press the key, uh, we need to make sure we get only a single clock cycle pulse. Uh, so we don't increment multiple times. That's point number one. Point number two, we do use a face lock loop to buffer our 50 megahertz clock. Like I discussed in lecture, it's always used, it's always a great idea to use face lock loops as clock buffers to avoid loading the clock line. Point number three is if you look under the RTL viewer, there is actually a state machine viewer that you can directly go to uh, to look at your the state machine representation. But if you look at the RTL viewer, let's say, you know, here's a single pulse FSM instance. You see how this is in yellow. That means uh, the synthesizer has interpreted a finite state machine for this, which is great. 
and uh, actually point number four is I'm out over my 20 minutes so I'm gonna go to 23 minutes actually I want to show you how uh, let's see I closed that so that is my journal doc so let's get into the journal doc but I want to show you how this picture gets translated to VHDL so let's go in here and look at it so you can see here is the state memory okay this corresponds exactly to this block okay so this block here is exactly this process right we have asynchronous reset uh, and on the rising edge of the clock so current state is what is synchronous as you will see in Modelson next state is not but the bottom line is do not add anything to this process okay this is how it should be and the state transition logic is given by another process okay uh, so it's a function of both the current state and the inputs like it says in this picture okay right there and then the output logic some folks do not use a selected signal assignment they like to put it in here which is fine I just like this because now this selected signal assignment corresponds to uh, this block and notice how I've used a selected signal assignment and not a process because in some ways this uh, okay you could use a process like in the sense this is depends on memory that is it depends on uh, current state okay. so anyway but there you have it so three separate VHDL um, constructs for these three blocks now I've run a model sim simulation note that your design up online does not include model sim it uses include signal tap realization we'll cover signal tap in the next lecture but for now notice how I have I have listed my signals so my pulse out is exactly one clock cycle wide but I also listed these internal signals current state and next state so if you actually go to the next rising edge so you can see that your let's go to the previous rising edge that your next state is not synchronous okay so next state uh, you we go into uh, the state one when our trigger goes high okay however what is synchronous and what better be synchronous is current state okay. so the next clock cycle we have a one clock cycle wide pulse and then we go to the zero state and just wait okay that's about it for this lecture see you next time